How did computers become so powerful? Well, to understand that, we'll need to understand that at their very core, computers are built out of a number of chips, or so-called integrated circuits. And these chips, in turn, are being built out of a huge number of transistors and extremely small conducting lines for electric current. Now, we can use those transistors, or manipulate them, to either let electric current flow through a specific conducting line or not. And it's that binary nature of electric current being present or not at a certain input or output point that allows us to encode information and perform calculations. Now, in 1965, an observation and forecast was made that the number of transistors we can place on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years. And the person who made that forecast is called Gordon E. Moore, which is why we call this observation Moore's Law. Moore was so convinced of his forecast that he went on to become a co-founder of Intel, a company that has now nearly 100,000 employees and more than $50 billion in annual revenue, none of which would have been possible without this trend. Despite the fact that Moore's law has just been a forecast, it's actually been remarkably accurate in its prediction from 1965 to 2013. Since then we've seen it slowing down a little to a doubling of transistors on integrated circuits, no longer every two years, but now every three years. It still means that in 2015 we're able to squeeze around 30 million times more transistors on integrated circuits than back in 1965. There's no way you can show this kind of exponential development on a graph unless you use some nonlinear scaling. Now every time we double transistor density, the chips they run become faster. How much faster is determined by a number of factors, such as the clock speed of the chip, the heat emitted by a processor or the size it occupies. Just as a quick example, Apple's A8X processor in 2014 has around 3 billion transistors and is about as powerful as the fastest supercomputer back in 1995. So it took us a rough 20 years of exponential chip development to wrap the power of a highly specialized scientific supercomputer into a consumer device. It's just that today we're putting those extremely powerful chips inside iPads to browse the web or play a game instead of doing science. 